G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Once again I hear Brian and spherical triangles. He is banging on like a dunny door in the storm yet again. Okay, well let's have a listen to something Brian said, shall we? And he has never been measured as a globe. There is no R value measurement for a globe out. It doesn't exist. This is the problem. There's no measurement or system of measurement that measures a sphere. That measures the earth, sorry, as a sphere. There is a system of measurement for a sphere, but there's no system of measurement that measures the earth as a sphere. It just doesn't exist, full stop. But they require it to exist for their claimed great circles to exist, and then for their claimed spherical triangles to exist, so then they can claim their spherical excess. But as I showed, what spherical excess is, is an adding of surface area that doesn't exist. Adding surface area that doesn't really exist, hey? Well, Brian, I will definitely come back to that claim later. Right, so what did they do about that? Now, you see, this is really, this is really funny. Watch this, right? This is from a surveying site. It's called Civil Planets, right? right? Methods of surveying. They go through plane surveying, right, here, where they go through all, how, what they do in plane surveying, where they create these, um, uh, like, uh, five-sided um, uh, uh, pentagon, pentagons. Um, and this is, like, they're, they're, this is all using triangles within it, blah, blah, blah. I'll show you some more of that again in a minute, some more of that in a minute. But the point is, is that in plane surveying, this is what they're doing. They're doing reality, right? Brian, plane surveyors are dealing with reality, and it would appear that you are not. You've got to love when you just ignore the words that are written on your own reference material. Cherry picking much there, Brian? Now, they're doing the same thing in, in geodetic surveying. They're using the same tables in the same thing, right? But try and give the impression that they're not, right? While Brian bangs on a bit more, just read the words here that Brian most definitely will not be reading out loud. Carry on, Brian. If we come down to here, we have geodetic surveying, right? And I added up these three angles here earlier, right? And it came to slightly less than 180 degrees. I did the same with these three angles of this triangle, and they came to slightly less um, than 180 degrees, and the same for this one. Is it though, Brian? Seems the third triangle is exactly 180 degrees. Did you get a little bit carried away there, Brian? I'm not going to go into that now. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Right. For a start, it's impossible for a real triangle to have less or more than 180 degrees, number one. Yet again, we have Brian trying his hardest to reword things to suit his narrative. Real triangles, Brian? Seriously? What you are calling real is what the rest of humanity calls planar triangles. Spherical triangles are also real triangles and just simply another form of geometry that is perfect for working with spheres instead of planes. Uh, uh, I haven't really given that one a much thought. So what they're doing is they're using actual triangles and claiming there's less than 180 degrees in it inside them from what I can see here so they can then claim that when they, they place them onto a convex surface, surface, right, of just the right size, right, that they will then, that excess amount that's created will make up the little bit that they're lacking here. Now, if, if that is not the biggest joke ever, I don't know what is. Oh, we can think of a few people that would qualify as the biggest jokes ever, mate. Case in point, let's listen to Brian a little bit later on displaying his unfathomable knowledge of sextants and angles and stuff. Here you have two lighthouses and you have a boat and the one is, is a 50 degree, degree angle here and a 60 degree angle here and the distance is whatever 10 miles. Then if you want to know um, how far you are from those or what position you're in relation to those two, you're going to use trilateration, right? You're going to use no, Brian, that's not trilateration, that's triangulation. You still aren't real sure about which is which, are you, Brian? For a self-professed expert, this is kind of embarrassing, mate. Now, if, if that is not the biggest joke ever, I don't know what is. Because they can't, obviously, they can't use, they don't use it vertically. They can use it vertically, sorry, with lighthouses and stuff, uh, with the sextant, but they can't do it with the celestials vertically. Oh, you can't do triangulation with celestial stars. Oh, really? 
Do tell why not, Brian. Um, because you don't know the height of the Celestials, but they can do lighthouses verti uh, vertically. Why do you not know the height, Brian? You know the flat baseline, you know the distance to the GP, you know it's a right angle at the GP, and you know the angle that you're measuring. You must be able to solve that real triangle now, Brian. So what happened when you tried to do that, Brian? Did you get a whole lot of different heights of the Celestials at different times and different angles? And Brian, did you just decide that you can't calculate the height? Instead of realizing that something is terribly wrong with how you're using celestial navigation, you just look away. That's not terribly honest, is it, Brian? Don't mention the height of the celestials. I did once, but I think I got away with it. Oh, and one last point, Brian. Celestial navigation on a globe doesn't need the height. We don't use triangles. We just use the angle that the celestial makes to the horizon or to the vertical, if you want to say you need a flat baseline. What a joke, Brian. Now, if, if that is not the biggest joke ever, I don't know what is. Here we have LIGO. Now, LIGO, I did a thing where I measured along the length of the, uh, in Google Earth, I made a polygon where using the two arms of LIGO, right, and a line between them. And what was funny is Google Earth, when I did that same polygon in a right angle triangle calculator, um, and the result I got from Google were different. So in the right angle triangle calculator, the opposite and the adjacent, and on Google Earth, the opposite and the adjacent were exactly the same length. But the hypotenuse in Google Earth was shorter. And I, I thought it was maybe down, because it was, because I wanted a big area, I thought it was maybe down to my accuracy. But then I went on and I did it again, and it was still wrong. There was still a difference. Then I did it with a bigger area, and there was a bigger difference, and a bigger area again, two more times, and there was a bigger difference, two more times. And I figured out what was going on. Google Earth, right, what they're doing is they're treating, let's say this is the opposite, this is the, hypo, uh, the adjacent, right, they're treating those two sides of the triangle as straight lines, right, but they're trying to give the impression, right, that you're on a spherical convex surface. But the problem with that is if they do that, right, what happens is the, the hypotenuse between these two points this adjacent and this opposite all curve, and they end up with spherical excess. What's that? That'd be like stretching out the land here and there's a, a void in here that doesn't exist. Well, Brian got himself all hot and bothered over Google Earth and spherical excess. He stated many times that extra lands don't exist. Well, Brian, let me help you lose some more sleep. Now, here are a few facts that can't be disputed. In the USA, there are two states that are rectangular, and their borders are straight lines, meaning that no natural features were used to define the state's borders. Now listen very carefully, I will say this only once. Colorado and Wyoming are the same size. Both span 4 degrees of latitude north to south, and both span 7 degrees of longitude east to west. Okay, so the same amount of degrees, Brian. Have you got that? Oh, and of this, there is no doubt whatsoever. It is written into the law that is how the state borders are defined. So how about you Google the area of each state, Brian? Wyoming is 253,340 kilometers, and Colorado is not the same. It's, it's 269,837 kilometers. That's 16,500 square kilometers more. How is this happening, Brian? Now let's just look at the sizes. North to south, 440 kilometers for both Colorado and Wyoming. Wyoming's northern border is 550 kilometers. Its southern border is 587 kilometers. Colorado's northern border, which is mostly shared with Wyoming, is the same length, 587 kilometers, just seven degrees but its southern border is 622 kilometers. All four are seven degrees long. 
Now, those distances are correct. I mean, there are farms and houses and cities and roads all along those borders. They can't be cheated to be a different distance. Someone would notice if their farm or their road was 10% shorter than what was stated on the deeds. So, Brian, you have a huge problem here. This is showing spherical access in action, in real life, at the scale of the states of the USA. You can see it, can't you? Uh, I haven't really given that one a much thought. So... I can't wait for you to trot off to Papa Flurf Jokely and ask him for his help on this one. You will not be able to say anything other than, well, I guess Wally has done it again. The earth is not flat. Because if those states have borders that are only east, west, north and south, which they do, and if they only have 90 degree corners, which they do, then they must be real rectangles if the earth was flat. They are not real rectangles but they are geodesic rectangles because, now say it with me, Brian, the Earth is a globe. Now that Brian has a headache and needs an aspirin and a good lie down, I will go on to prove that black is white, but I will be careful on the very next pedestrian crossing I come across. And then I did see and see quite a lot this week, so enjoy some of the good and some of the bad. I did cry a little bit at one stage. Enjoy this, guys. Oh, mate, it's so jolly hot here. Hey, I want to ask you, this is the... Uh, 20 by 40 stock and it slides beautifully in that groove there what I'm trying to work out is how do I need a smart person to tell me how do I clamp that so this will slide up and down this way and that way when on as a leg extension but will also sit nice and solid all ideas gratefully accepted PSI now rather than whatever the compressor was trying to push out through there. Gee, 100 PSI, no wonder it kept blowing the hose to pieces. Yeah, do you see what I see there? After going really well last night and on two cuts. Look at that, beautiful edges. Didn't miss a beat. Same with this one. So then I flipped the whole part over to do the last part five and six, and it ran away. And look, even got stuck into the bolt. Oh, yikes! Not sure why it did that. I think maybe up this end of the the mill is a little bit likely to lose a step or two. I did a little bit the other day. Anyway, I'll try and I've got to cut that one and see how I go. Oh my goodness, how did I not see that before? Jolly loose piece. And yeah, nicely jammed in there. Uh. Well, this is what happens when you cut without tabs. As you can see, it was going absolutely beautiful until the very last minute when the middle piece which wasn't held everything else was held let go ah, jeepers you know probably is still savable i'm gonna say it is hey mate here's a bit of a conundrum for you i'm not sure if i can show this really well this one is perfectly perpendicular on the inside but on the out on this side there's a bit of a shear like it's not quite straight it's starting to bend over but on the opposite side the outer edge is perfectly perpendicular but the inside has got a little bit of a taper to it so it's sort of like it's cutting to cutting in a bit here cutting in a bit here but straight there and straight there so it's not a, a plain shear. I don't know how it did it. This one's perfect, by the way. Of the six, I think I've got two were spotless. Perfect. Or no, maybe not quite perfect because I slightly too close to the edge.
Well, I just made the final end cap. Man, this one was such a nice fit. I can't even get the rotten thing back out. I guess I'll have to hook it out and pull it out, but man, that is such a smooth, spot on finish. Well done.